Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you the drawing performance of the Xiaomi Pad 5 with its pen, the Xiaomi Smart Pen versus the Samsung Tab S7 FE with its pen, the Samsung S Pen. First of all, disclaimer, this is not the Tab S7 FE. This is not the fan edition because I no longer have that tablet. This is the Tab S7 Plus. I'm going to make this video using this tablet instead because the drawing performance of the Samsung S Pen is similar to the fan edition. For this video, just imagine this is the Samsung Tab S7 FE. So I'm going to put the specifications for the Xiaomi tablet and the various Samsung Tab S7 tablets on the screen so that you can compare them yourself. The main differences between Xiaomi and the Samsung tablets to me would be the extra features provided by the Samsung tablets. I find these features useful, which is why I'm talking about them here. First feature is called Samsung second screen and you have to turn it on on the Samsung tablet first and then on your computer, look for that tablet, press Windows K and connect your computer to the tablet, to the Samsung tablet. And now you can use the Samsung tablet as an external display. So here I can actually drag the window from left to the right you can run desktop apps on the Samsung tablet as well. For example, you can run Photoshop, uh, Affinity Photo, and you can draw on those software, but the latency is quite noticeable. So the drawing experience is not good. So whenever I use this as an external display, it's just for viewing stuff. I don't draw on it. The second feature is Samsung DeX, which allows you to connect the Samsung tablet to an external display and use this as if it's a computer. The Xiaomi tablet is unable to output video signal through the USB-C port. So nothing will happen. Next, there is better integration with online cloud storage services such as Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, and maybe other services. And the Samsung tablet also has a micro SD card slot. And Samsung says they are going to provide three Android OS updates. So currently these two tablets are running on Android 11. So this is probably going to get Android 12 and Android 13. Whereas for the Xiaomi, we are not too sure whether we are going to get any OS updates. Anyway, even without OS updates, the apps will still continue to run. The app developers will still continue to update the apps to run on Android. So you will still be working with the latest versions of those apps. In terms of general performance, both tablets are kind of similar. On the Xiaomi tablet, it's going to feel smoother though because of the 120Hz refresh rate. So animations such as panning around the home screen, loading web pages, surfing around, scrolling around, all this animation will be smoother on the Xiaomi tablet, even though the processor on both tablets are kind of evenly matched in my opinion, despite benchmark differences. And now let's talk about pricing. The Xiaomi Pad 5 can be found very easily on AliExpress.com and the price is around 400 US dollars inclusive of global shipping. The Xiaomi Smart Pen is not included. This is sold separately for around US $65. So we are looking at a total of $465 for the tablet and the pen. Now for the Samsung tablet, the official retail price is $530 for the model that comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Remember for the Xiaomi tablet, it's 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. At the time of making this video, it seems like Amazon has some pretty good discount for the Tab S7 FE. Um, this is now selling at $450. So if you want to have a larger display, um, this is actually a pretty good deal. If you need more RAM, if you need 6 gigs of RAM and more storage, you can upgrade to uh, the other model, which is 256 GB, and that is $130 more, which in my opinion is 
um, not as good a deal compared to this base model but this base model only has 4 gigs of RAM my recommendation is this if you don't have to buy a tablet urgently wait and see if there are any good deals because the thing with Android tablets is the prices can drop quite quickly for example with the Samsung Tab S7 FE it's less than two months old and it already has promotion and discounts going on and here in Singapore it also has some pretty good discounts from 10 to 15 percent off so if you can wait um, wait and compare the deals for the Xiaomi tablet at 400 US dollars it's already a pretty good deal if you can find it at a lower price it's a terrific deal if you want to buy the Xiaomi tablet, make sure to buy the one with the global room so that the UI is in English. Let's take a look at the pens. Both are active pens, which is to say that when your pen is close to the display, you will see your cursor. Active pens have good palm rejection by default, so you can rest your palm on the display while you write and draw and you will not introduce any stray strokes some apps will only take pen input which is to say you are going to get perfect palm rejection the xiaomi smart pen is a bluetooth stylus so it has a battery inside and it needs battery life to work the samsung s pen doesn't have a battery it does not need a battery to work to charge the xiaomi smart pen you have to snap it to the side of the tablet using the magnets the magnets are quite strong there is no battery indicator so you won't know whether the pen is charging or how much battery life is left and also before you can use the pen you have to actually pair it with the tablet first and the pairing process is not by snapping the pen here you have to go into the settings turn on bluetooth and search for the pen and if you turn off the bluetooth and you turn it on again you have to do the pairing process again I'm not too worried about the battery life for the Xiaomi pen because it's always by the side of the tablet it's always going to be charged for the Samsung S pen no pairing is needed you can just use it it's always paired there are two buttons on the Xiaomi pen one is configured to take screenshots the other one is configured to take quick notes there is only one button on the Samsung pen and you can customize this button to open up this uh, set of shortcuts I have this button turned off because this button is actually quite close to the pen tip and the way I use this pen uh, means I always hit that button accidentally so I would turn the button off but for the Xiaomi pen the buttons are actually further up you can see the distance between this button and this button to the pen tip it's a very small distance but it actually helps a lot at preventing uh, me from hitting those buttons accidentally both pen nips have this matte textured surface on the nib they are both quite smooth on the display there's no difference between the resistance or the friction you get this is the original pen nib from samsung with the rubberized or textured tip if you buy replacement nibs for the Samsung S Pen, chances are you're going to get a plastic nib where the tip is also plastic. Pen nibs are very easy to find for Samsung. At the time of making this video, replacement pen nibs are very difficult to find for the Xiaomi Pen. Both pens have this textured surface on the body. They are comfortable to hold and they have good build quality. Both displays are laminated, so there is minimal gap between the pen tip and the line you create. The more obvious gap is the latency gap, which is the gap as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. And there is latency on both tablets. For the pen test, I will be using this app Midibank Paint because you cannot adjust the pressure curve, so you get to see the actual performance of the pen itself and later on i will show you clip studio where you can adjust the pressure curve and see how you can improve the pen performance let's do the slow diagonal line test so these are quick strokes and they are very smooth let's draw the strokes 
draw the lines very slowly and see if I can get straight lines the lines are quite straight with slight jitter but overall performance is I would say good enough and this is the Samsung S Pen so those are the quick strokes and now for the slow lines seems like there is slightly less jitter with the Samsung S Pen now one strange thing here is for some reason at the edge here you can see the lines they are thin uh, it seems like pressure sensitivity doesn't work that great near the edge of the display but the diagonal lines are looking good let's draw tapered strokes with the Xiaomi Pen And this is the Samsung S Pen. So you can see the tapered strokes on the Samsung tablet, they look so much better. The strokes can taper quite smoothly. Whereas on the Xiaomi tablet with the Xiaomi Pen, the strokes they taper quite abruptly. This is as if you are drawing with a marker, whereas for this, it really looks like you are drawing with a brush that has pretty good pressure sensitivity. And this is Clip Studio Paint, which also has latency. Anyway, the latency doesn't really affect me that much because um, it doesn't affect accuracy. So I'm still able to draw what I want to draw. The thing is, with the Xiaomi tablet, the display has a refresh rate of 120Hz but even so, it still has latency. The difference between this versus the Samsung tablet is on the Xiaomi tablet with the 120Hz refresh rate, the line that appears on screen will be smoother whereas on the Samsung tablet, when you draw a line like this, the lines will come out bit by bit due to the 60 Hz refresh rate. Anyway, the jutter from the 60 Hz refresh rate doesn't really affect me since I don't draw that fast and I don't draw long sweeping lines like that. So this is my normal drawing speed and um, the latency doesn't really affect my work at all. The main thing here is, when it comes to drawing, the most important thing is are you able to get the lines to go where you want it to go and do the lines appear exactly the way you want it to appear. So I've just spent half an hour adjusting the pressure curve of Clip Studio on the Xiaomi tablet and I also went in to adjust the taper under two property and also the starting and ending under sub 2 detail to get these lines which I'm about to show you so now it seems like the lines they can taper quite nicely and you have to do this for all the brushes you use so it can get quite tedious but yes you can get the lines to taper but the thing is not all drawing apps allow you to adjust the pressure curve and this is the Samsung tablet it seems like the line quality for the Xiaomi tablet is actually better now after tweaking the pressure curve compared to the Samsung tablet why do I say that? I say that because you can see the stroke it starts thinner becomes thicker and then becomes thinner this is almost like the Apple Pencil now and with the Samsung tablet the stroke starts thick becomes slightly thicker and then tapers down I guess I can adjust the pressure to make the start of the stroke even thinner but that would probably take me another 15 to 30 minutes so the thing is this at least with Clip Studio you can still adjust the pressure curve to get the lines to uh, look right but with other apps, uh, other drawing apps 
you have to work with the default brush pen pressure setting. So the drawing performance you get can depend very much on the apps you use. That was the pen performance you saw. And now I want to talk more about the drawing experience by drawing the same subject on both tablets. All right, so the Xiaomi tablet is 11 inch while the Samsung tablet is 12.4 inch. And this is how these two displays compared to an A5 size sketchbook. So you can see the Samsung tablet is actually noticeably larger. It has more space here, more width compared to this A5 size sketchbook. Whereas for the Xiaomi, it's almost the size of this sketchbook. So you are going to get more canvas space here on the Samsung tablet. Okay, let's draw something really quickly. The initial activation force for the Xiaomi Pen is good, uh, but you still have to press down slightly just to get the lines. So what I'm trying to draw here is actually a flower shop, um, a florist shop. Let's try and get the lines to taper here. Let's try and get the thin lines. Let's try and draw diagonal lines and see what happens. Works fine. This is my usual drawing speed and it works fine. It looks fine to me. 11 inch display is a good size to work with. I mean, I have the palette here. I can still rest my palm on the display while drawing and I still get a good amount of space to draw. So I don't have any issues with this particular size. Let's draw some diagonal lines again. I can see some um, wobbliness but it's not that bad. When it comes to navigating, uh, zooming in and out, panning, rotating, uh, the gestures, um, they are very smooth. So far, I was able to get the lines to come out the way I expect them to. So after tweaking the pressure curve, it really helps a lot. Otherwise, it's going to feel like you are using a marker to draw all this and you won't have any line variation because all your lines will have the same thickness. And when your lines have the same thickness, your lines are going to look boring. Overall drawing performance is quite smooth as well. Yes, there is latency. So you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip. But as mentioned earlier, it doesn't affect accuracy. It's just the line trying to catch up with the pen tip. So not a big issue that affects me. I don't have any issues when it comes to drawing this. So the lines are able to come out just the way I expect them to, so um, it works great. Let's have some creeper plants here. Yep, I can get the thin lines and the thick lines, so I can draw details with this pen as well. Let's do some hatching lines. Okay, so this is just a really simple sketch. And this is the Samsung tablet. This time I'm going to draw maybe a laundry shop. So I'm able to get the thin and thick lines as well. This is how thick the line really is. The S Pen pen performance by default is better compared to the Xiaomi pen. Oops. 
but after you adjust the pressure curve, the Xiaomi Pen uh, can perform pretty well. So um, I have no issues drawing with both pens. The display is quite slippery, by the way. And I would not advise you to get a matte screen protector because the pen tip can wear out quite fast. So it's going to take some time to get used to drawing on glass. I used to use matte screen protectors, but I have uh, since stopped using them. Initial activation force of the Samsung S Pen is pretty good as well. The initial activation force is slightly better compared to the Xiaomi uh, Pen. So I don't have any issues drawing this as well. The performance is really good. Prior to making this video, I had the preconceived notion that the Samsung S Pen is going to be better. And it is better in the sense that you can get pretty good pen performance with various drawing apps with the default brush settings. Whereas with the Xiaomi Smart Pen, the app that you choose matters a lot. With the Xiaomi Pen, if you cannot tweak the pressure curve, you won't be able to get the lines to taper nicely like this. So drawing strokes with uh, beautiful tapering lines like this, it's going to be impossible with some apps. Clip Studio is a pretty good app. So if you use this app, as your main drawing app, the drawing performance is going to be really good. So between these two tablets, which one would I recommend for drawing purposes? Well, for the Xiaomi tablet, if you want the best drawing experience, you have to use Clip Studio, which is the monthly subscription app. Otherwise, uh, my other app recommendation would be to use Concepts, where pressure sensitivity isn't as important. So um, if these two are your main drawing apps, the Xiaomi is the tablet I would recommend. In fact, as an overall package, the Xiaomi provides more value compared to the Tab S7 FE simply because the base model comes with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage and the display is 120 hertz uh, display. For the Samsung, um, the selling points are mentioned like way earlier in this video. I like the display simply because it's a larger display. In terms of weight, this is about 100 grams heavier compared to this, but both tablets are very thin and very compact. The main selling point here is the Samsung S Pen works well with the various drawing apps at the default brush with the default brush settings. So you don't specifically have to use Clip Studio uh, to get the best drawing performance. If we are looking at the official retail price of $530 versus $465, I would probably go with Xiaomi because it has 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. If we are looking at the discounted price that you saw earlier, $450 versus $465, then um, it's a more compelling purchase here. But it still has 4 gigs of RAM. So I guess I would still go with the Xiaomi unless um, you don't want to use Clip Studio. All right, I hope this video is helpful. If you guys want to check out more drawing tablet reviews, just visit the links that I have for you in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you again.